call to order the regular meeting of the Mount Lebanon Board of School Directors. It is Monday, February 19th at 7.32 p.m. We're present in Mount Lebanon High School Room D205, and public participation is also available via Zoom. Um, we have some special guests joining us tonight uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and I'd like to welcome up from Hoover Elementary, uh, Dr. Nikki Gill, as well as Noe Tuaf, Wesley Adams, Aira Hamzik, Miles Yi, Danu Singasani, and Emily Marmo. I'll face the audience or the flag. Yeah, would be good. We'll take pictures after. <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hawks and job, guys. <laughs> if you guys want to take photos, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Okay. Uh, I move that it be resolved that the board approves the minutes of the policy committee meeting held on January 8th, 2024, the discussion meeting held on January 8th, 2024, and the regular meeting held on January 22nd, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Did you take Not for the minute. We're doing that by consent agenda. Okay. No. Oh. You know what? We didn't do a roll call, so we don't know who's here. Roll call, please, Mrs. Walters. <laughs> Mrs. Burdick? Here. Mrs. Crable? Here. Mrs. Gensel? Here. Ms. Guth? Here. Mr. Hoffman? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Mr. Wyland? Ms. Fleischer? Here. Mrs. Gelman? Here. Eight members present. Now. I move that it be approved, uh, resolved that the board approves the minutes of the policy committee meeting held on January 8th, 2024, the discussion meeting held on January 8th, 2024, and the regular meeting held on January 22nd, 2024. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Or abstentions? Okay. The vote is open. I will just mark it unanimous since you're voting by voice vote. Okay. And we'd like to welcome um, some members of the Mellon Middle School Student Council to make, make their report, Alexander Lorica and Mila Beer. Thank you so much for inviting us to speak tonight. My name is Alex Laraca, and I am an eighth grade member of our Student Council's Executive Board. My name is Mila Beer, and I am an eighth grade member of our Council. We would like to update you on the latest happenings of Mellon Middle School Student Council. In December, we sponsored a Wish Drive project for the Bridge to Home Animal Rescue. A wish list from Bridge to Home was shared with our Mellon students and staff detailing their most needed items. Participants could drop off donations during one of our three collection mornings at a table in the main lobby worked by student council members. Everyone who donated received a mini candy cane and a spirit slip. All donation items were then sent to the animal rescue prior to break. In conjunction with our wish drive, we also celebrated our annual 12 days of holiday spirit. Students participated in spirit themes as a way to count down the days leading up to winter break. We kicked off our first of the 12 spirit days with holiday hat day and ended with holiday morning pajama day on the half day on December 22nd. 
All participants received a spirit slip and it was a fun way to spread some winter cheer. Six winners per grade level were then chosen from our spirit drawing for the month of December. We reconvened in the new year and planned two spirit days for the month of January. Our first was held on January 12th. It was a black and gold day to cheer on the Steelers ahead of their first playoff game. The second was held on Friday, January 29th. Students showed off their elementary school pride by dressing in their elementary school color. For February, we kicked off our Feel the Beats Friday initiative in support of our Heart Health Month. Students and staff are encouraged to wear red on each of the Fridays in February. We are selling heart-shaped sunglasses, bracelets, and heart-shaped stress balls every Friday morning in the main lobby. All proceeds benefit the St. Clair Hospital Cardiac Unit. Students who participate are awarded a spirit slip for a chance to win at the end of the month. We have one more sale left this Friday and we cannot wait to see what our total is at month's end. For March, plans are underway to host our annual Shamrock Blitz. Each student at Mellon will have a shamrock with their name hidden somewhere in the building. Students who find their shamrock will deposit it into a bin before St. Patrick's Day for a chance to win a prize. We are looking forward to our shamrock blitz along with planning a few more events to close out the school year. Thank you so much for listening this evening. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right, and reporting on behalf of the Mount Lebanon High School Student Council, we have Maya Golden and Timmy Jenkins. Hello, my name is Maya Golden and this is Timmy Jenkins and we are officers on the Senior Executive Council for the 2023-2024 school year. We have had a great past few months with many events for all grades and we would love to share them with you. First and foremost, we held our annual snowball dance. It was great to see a majority of the student body there and show their school spirit. We had a total of 650 students attend, and with our ski theme of Ski Lodge, it was a true winter wonderland. Our men's basketball team also won their section in the class of 6A and are now the number one seed for the start of Whippeal playoffs. Before the game, there was a tailgate held by the Devil's Den where our classmates cooked burgers and hot dogs for the students and spent time bonding with one another. We look forward to cheering on both the boys and girls basketball teams as they advance to their first playoff games at the end of this week. Continuing the theme of Mount Lebanon victories, our Model UN team traveled to Washington, D.C., where they competed against several other schools around the country at American University's Model UN convention. Our team won first place as the best large delegate, and many of the students individually placed first, second, and third, while many others received the diplomacy awards. Last Friday, the high school hosted another successful blood drive in which many students took time to donate their blood in an effort to save lives. Also on Friday, the choir, the theater, and APR students departed for their weekend trip to New York City. The choir performed on Sunday at one of New York's beautiful uh, churches, and they all spent the rest of the trip exploring New York City as they visited museums and attended two Broadway shows. The high school recently held their open house for students and parents to explore courses and the courses registration has just closed for the 2024-2025 school year. Now in terms of student council, the junior class is beginning the process of electing officers for their senior year and has uh, just hosted a bunk cake fundraiser. That's it for our report tonight. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak. <laughs> All right. Now for the board president's report. Uh, I'm happy to report that the high school student council stole a little bit of my thunder talking about <laughs> the Whippeal basketball playoffs and the Model UN, so I won't repeat those. Um, February is Black History Month, which is a celebration of the heritage, culture, and contributions of people of the African diaspora. In her report, Dr. Fries will highlight some of the ways that we've celebrated Black History Month across the district. Uh, we'd also like to wish a happy Lunar New Year to all who celebrated. And we'd like to recognize a few of the many student achievements over the past month, in addition to the basketball team and the Model UN. Um, the Pennsylvania Junior Academy of Science is a statewide organization of junior and senior high school students designed to promote interest in science through the development of research projects or investigations. Mount Lebanon High School and middle school students recently competed in the PJAS regional competition 
And we are have several uh, first place winners in their categories who will move on to the state competition at Penn State University this May. Uh, those are high school students, Katie Ding, Aiden Hall, August Kohler and Lucia, Lucia Mikash, Layla Polat and August Zentner, Jefferson Middle School eighth graders, Claire Raff and Annalise Meyer and seventh grader, Elena Raff and Mellon Middle School eighth graders, eighth grader, Sasha Rozovsky. I should know that name. That's my son's Odyssey of the Mind teammate. <laughs> and seventh grader, Eli Lasis. Uh, so good luck to them at the state competition in May. And on March 7th, uh, 80 of Mount Lebanon High School seniors will be inducted into the Mount Lebanon chapter of the Cum Laude Society. Mount Lebanon High School has had a Cum Laude Society chapter since 1962. There are 382 chapters in the world, and one of the existing and of the existing chapters, Mount Lebanon is one of the 26 public school chapters. According to the society bylaws, induction into the chapter is based solely on academic performance. The top 20% of the senior class are eligible for induction. A student must have had a 4.9 GPA to be considered in the top 20% of this year's class. Congratulations to all of the Cum Laude Society inductees. And that concludes my report. Now for the superintendent's report, Dr. Fritz. Thank you. Mr. Stangle's gonna put my slide deck up. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As Mrs. Fleischer mentioned, I'm going to be highlighting some of our Black History Month activities that are taking place across the school district. I do wanna note that this is just a sampling. There are quite a few things that are happening at each of our schools, but I picked a few things at each of the schools um, by grade band that I thought were particularly interesting. So. Just to start us off uh, with Foster Elementary School, you will see here that we had students for art classes. Every grade learned about a different artist from the Harlem Renaissance. First grade read A Splash of Red and made an artwork inspired by Horace Pippin. Second grade created um, still life art in the style of William Johnson. Third grade used shading to show highlights and shadows, emulating the photographs of James Van Der Zeck. Uh, fourth grade learned about the collage artwork of Romare Bearden, who's actually a Peabody High School graduate here in Pittsburgh, and created jazz-inspired works. Fifth grade examined the cityscapes of Jacob Lawrence and created their own using paint and collage. And you can see the students um, doing this artwork on the right-hand side in the photos. And if you follow Foster on their um, social media, you'll get a chance to see even more photos. Next up is Hoover Elementary. Um, at Hoover and the library, they focused on discussing the lack of diversity in literature and why it is important that each of us can see ourselves, mirrors, and learn about others through windows in the books we read. Students also learned about several African American figures in literature. Next up, we have Jefferson and Howell Elementaries. Each of them had the Collaboration Festival performance. Uh, Jefferson's was this past week and Howell's is coming up in a couple of weeks. It's a celebration of African diaspora. Um, it has seven artists who go on a journey through a story that takes them through different art forms, both visual arts and music. For our Lincoln Elementary in grade two, they create a quote quilt. Throughout the month, they read a um, different biographies to learn about and discuss the lives of different influential black people in history. And each paper quilt square includes a quote by one of the eight people. Students draw a picture to represent what the quote or person means to them. And at the end of the month, students assemble their own completed split squares to make a quote quilt, very similar to the one that is here in this photo. Next up, we have Markham Elementary and our third grade students. In third grade, they read about and discussed famous but not well-known Black <clears throat> Americans who made an impact in their field and opened doors for others, including Eldridge Baylor, Ray Montague, Bessie Coleman, Alma Thomas, Jesse Owens, Henry Brown, Shirley Chisholm, Jerry Lawson, and Mae Jemison. And then they read Let the Children March Undefeated and we dream a world. And that, and through these, they discussed how even children can make a difference and be agents of change in the world. 
Next up, we have Washington Elementary, and this is with our English language learners. Students in grades K, or I'm sorry, three through five are learning about Martin Luther King and the history of racism. Students in grades one and two are talking about Ruby Bridges and completing a few activities related to her. And then in kindergarten, students are reading the ABCs of Black History Month and completing activ activities associated with the book. Next up, we have Jefferson Middle School, and here you'll see a group of eighth grade students. These students are reading and reflecting, reading, writing, and reflecting on the novel The Glory Field, a work focusing on the institution of slavery and the antebellum South and following descendants through a civil rights journey in successive generations. Research, poetry, videos, and author information and other supplemental materials are also covered. In addition to this, information about the poetry of Langston Hughes is studied, and students write two six-word poems reflecting their understanding of the book The Glory Field and the struggles faced by the Black community, and students watch a crash course video on the Harlem Renaissance. Next up, we have Mellon Middle School. They start each day with a video biography during the morning announcements showcasing famous Black Americans and their impact on our nation. And finally, at the high school. Each morning, a message is shared with students and staff regarding key Black figures in the United States <clears throat> during morning announcements. And then in addition to that, in honor of Black History Month, the students of the Black Student Union held a community book drive to increase the representation of Black characters in our classroom libraries. And this year, the students ran the book drive from November 15th through January 19th, and they collected approximately 225 books. There's just two final updates for this month. Um, School-based behavioral health. In October, we shared with the Board of Directors um, and they were approved to provide school-based behavioral health support systems here at Mount Lebanon by the Bradley Center. Jefferson Middle, Med Mellon Middle, and the high school have been approved to provide services by the state and services will begin in March. Right now, um, information will be shared in the next couple of weeks with families to let them know how these services can be accessed. And we're currently waiting for state approval for our elementary schools, which should hopefully come in the next month or so as well. And then it wouldn't be a meeting without us asking for anybody that is interested in working with us and working with our amazing students and staff. We have openings for cafeteria, custodial, paraprofessionals, um, substitute teachers across the district, as well as day to day subs. So if you're interested, please follow this information or reach out to our HR department to apply. And that is all I have for this month. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Fries. Uh, agenda item 2E, board reports. Uh, policy committee, Ms. Guth. Sure. Um, we met last Monday to, oh man, I don't have that. I guess it's the agenda, sorry. To discuss uh, four policies, and we're moving ahead with three of them to uh, policy JICG, which is um, some slight alterations to student smoking use and a Session of tobacco offenses and policy ACD, ADC and GBED, which is tobacco free school and tobacco free workplace, then policy ECF, which is energy management and conservation. Thank you, Ms. Uh, PSBA and board development, Mrs. Gelman. On Tuesday, February 6th, the governor announced his proposed, proposed budget for 2024-25, um, suggesting an increase of over $1 billion in education funding for Pennsylvania this year. A substantial portion of this funding is anticipated to be directed primarily towards the most financially needy school districts, while most other districts, including Mount Lebanon, are likely to see smaller increases with additional funds in the six figure range coming from an increase to the basic education funding formula and our special ed budget is likely to receive a modest increase of less than 3%. Thank you, Mrs. Gelman. Uh, MLFE, Mrs. Gensel. Sure, uh, we did not meet in person this month, but we'll plan on meeting next on March 5th. And I'd say uh, just a reminder to all um, district staff that the grant applications are due April 1st. And Dr. Davis, if I'm forgetting anything, I'm guessing you would let me know. <laughs> Great. Municipal liaison report, Mrs. Crable. 
Sure. I had the opportunity to meet with Craig Gorella, uh, and he let me know that they were working on a report that has been out um, that talks about the utilization of fields. So I'm really excited to take a deep dive uh, with him on that. They're looking at different ways um, for us to connect, as well as seeing what's being overutilized, what's being underutilized, and how we can work better effectively. And also the reorganization of some committees, um, and I will be joining the Parks and Recs Committee, because why not? I love fields, <laughs> and that gives us another breath there as well. That's all I have. Great. Uh, Parkway West Career and Technical Center, Ms. Johnson. Hello. We did not meet in person this month. Um, we met over Zoom briefly. And um, as we see further on in our agenda tonight, we're going to be talking about the Parkway West Career and Technology Center approved 2024-2025 general operating and joint your budgets for approval. And that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Pathfinder School, Mrs. Burdick. The meeting is scheduled for this week on Wednesday, so I don't have a report. And Shazda, I am bummed to report that uh, it turns out that the first Shazda event of the year uh, on February 1st conflicted with our high school curriculum night. And as the parent of an incoming ninth grader, <laughs> I attended the high school curriculum night. Uh, so I was not able to attend that forum. I don't know if anybody we did attend. We did, actually. <laughs> you want to about it? <clears throat> Oh, sure. So um, myself, Mr. Hoffman, Dr. Davis, we went. Um, it was actually a, a, an incredible event. Um, it was very interesting to hear different things uh, about AI and how people are taking it, uh, as well as how other school districts are utilizing AI and how it's uh, been very beneficial for them as well. So it's a really great event uh, to hear what everyone else was doing and to see where we could go with AI. Mm -hmm sure the start of many many conversations about that topic thank you all right miss fleischer i just wanted yes. to add one more thing yes please. that's okay i was able to along with my fellow new board members uh miss crable and mrs gelman we were able to uh tour a few schools on last tuesday i believe it was uh we went over to hoover uh we went to uh jefferson middle Jefferson Elementary, and then to uh, Mellon Middle. That was all of them we saw, right? So we saw a bunch of schools in the afternoon. We got to see really great things, wonderful people. Um, got to stop into a few classrooms, saw libraries, got to eat, eat lunch. Uh, it was a really great experience getting to see um, our schools in action during the day. And, and uh, one thing that really jumped out at me was, um, as, as we walked around and, and I walked next to Mrs. Crable, we we're able to see a lot of students who don't always get to see a person of color in a leadership role and seeing the looks on children's faces, the empowerment that you could see was in their eyes, uh, self-actualization of, wow, seeing someone who looks like me um, means a lot. And research shows that having such leaders in schools is very important. Um, and produces great outcomes, both academically and, and beyond the classroom. Um, our demographics as a community have shifted, and I think it's a great opportunity for us as a school district to respond to those community needs. Love to see more representation, so that's not just a chance encounter uh, on one day um, in the hallway, but something that kids can come to know and appreciate over the years. Thank you for sharing. I did see uh, that you all got to also try the middle school fries, which I've been mm -hmm. hearing about Very for good. years. <laughs> so uh, I hope they were as delicious as reported. <laughs> um, next, we have comments from residents and taxpayers concerning action items for this meeting. Uh, I don't believe anyone has previously respect requested to speak, so we'll <clears throat> move on to anyone in the room or online who has comments on action items and wishes to speak. <coughs> Anyone online, Mr. Single? Okay. Uh, we also do not have any unfinished business for board consideration or action. Um, <coughs> so we'll move on to items of new business for board consideration and action. All matters of new business were considered and discussed 
by the board at the discussion meeting on February 12th, except those noted by an asterisk. Uh, Mrs. Gelman, would you please read item A, financial reports? I move that it be resolved that the board approves, ratifies, and accepts the following financial reports. Treasurer's report dated January 31, 2024. List of bills dated January 13, 2024 through January 23, 2024. List of tax refunds for January 2024. And list of unusable equipment dated February 1, 2024. Second. All right, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson, if you need to um, register your vo uh, vote by voice vote, you can and I can enter <coughs> it for you. Kim? Yes. Okay. Um, my vote is yes. I don't know why it's not letting Thank me in. Thank you so much. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, Agenda item B, Mrs. Burdick. I move that it be resolved that the board ratifies the June 30th, 2023 list of budgetary transfers to close out the June 30th, 2023 fiscal year. Second. And as I forgot to mention last time, any questions or discussion? Okay, roll call please, Mrs. Walter. Voting is open. Were you able to um, record Mrs. Johnson's vote, or does she need to do a vote? She voice is vote? going to do voice vote. She did um, just text, but I'm asking her to to state her vote so everybody can hear it before yes. I register. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Agenda item C. Mrs. Gensel. I move that it be resolved that the board approves budgetary transfers totaling $38,046 to reallocate monies for chorus supplies, practical arts supplies, and student travel for PMEA and other music honors. Second. This is one of the items that has been revised since our discussion meeting. Dr. Fries, can you highlight the changes? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, last meeting, we were asked to give more explicit information about the transfers. So you'll notice that there's a new way of um, basically sharing this information. It has both the account numbers, the description, the debit, the credit as to where <clears throat> it's going. And then it also gives a general summary as to what it's for. Um, last week when we talked about it, we talked about the coral supplies as well as the uh, need for additional high school practical art supplies. And in addition to that, we added for this week the PMEA and other honorary performance opportunities. We're hoping that this form makes it easier for the public uh, to understand where the debits and credits are coming from. Any other questions or comments from the board? 
Okay, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Thank you. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item D, please, Ms. Good. I move that it be resolved that the board approves Parkway West Career and Technical Center's general operating budget of $8,865,766 and jointer budget of $800,000. $800,017. The estimate for Mount Lebanon's contribution to the operating budget is uh, $325,091.38, and, and the contribution to the jointure budget is an estimated $148,448.65. Final expenditures are based on actual enrollment numbers. <coughs> Second. Questions or comments? Uh, I'd just like to clarify, I think we had some questions from the board about uh, sort of varying numbers in our resolution and on the document that we were provided by Parkway. I think there was an outdated cover sheet initially on the budget and that's since been updated. So everything should match. This is the current year's um, information. Okay, roll call please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Voting is closed. <clears throat> and the resolution passes unanimously. Okay. I was just asked to vote again. <laughs> that was an error on my okay. part. Okay. <laughs> Only voting once. <laughs> Um, agenda item E, services uh, provided by Peter Camarda. Uh, this is another agenda item that is new for this week. If um, we'll do the resolution and then Dr. Fries can, can provide a, a quick update. So Mrs. Grable. I move that it be resolved that the board approves the independent contractor agreement for finance office support with Peter Camarda at the rate of $110 per hour in the form presented. Second. Yeah, mm -hmm. she said that, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was corrected on that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dr. Fries, can you provide just some an overview of this so item? Mr. Camarda is going to provide us with support <clears throat> in our finance department. Um, we are projecting no more than 20 hours per week. He comes to us with a long line of experience in the area of um, business and finance and education management services. He worked as a chief financial officer for over 30 years and has served in the last 10 years working with various districts across the uh, Western Pennsylvania, helping to um, provide better management of business practices and budgets. Right. Any questions or comments from the board on the sign on? Okay, roll call, please. The voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Thank you. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. Okay, uh, item F please, Mr. Hoffman. I move that it be resolved that the board approves the list of personnel changes in the form presented. Second. Any questions or comments? 
It's just noted that this is updated since last week. And um, this evening we have present with us um, candidate for our director of communications, Mrs. Brandy Smith. Okay, roll call please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Thank you. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. Okay, well now that the voting is closed, <laughs> I'd like to um, welcome and congratulate Brandy Smith, who will serve as the, what's the official title so I don't get it wrong, <laughs> the Director of Communications uh, for the district. Um, I don't know, Mrs. Ms. Smith, if you'd like to come up and introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Brandy Smith and I'm very excited to be here. I had a very awesome meeting with all of you guys earlier and um, I'm just looking forward to joining the team. So thank you. Thank We're looking you. forward to having you join. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we're going back around. Mrs. Gelman, agenda item G, please. I move that it be resolved that the board approves an agreement with Carrie Albert's Learning Solutions to provide academic services via instruction in the home for a Mount Lebanon School District exceptional student for up to 14 hours per week, not to exceed 19 weeks. The cost will not exceed 13300 per student. Services are anticipated for one student. Second. Dr. Fries, this is noted, is, is this an additional student? This is one less student than last one week. One fewer student. Yes. Okay. That's the change. Any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Thank you. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. All right, agenda item H, please, Mrs. Burdick. I move that it be resolved that the board approves an agreement with Carrie Albert's Learning Solutions to provide academic services via instruction in the home for a Mount Lebanon School District exceptional student for up to 19 hours per week not to exceed 19 weeks. The cost will not exceed $18,050 per student. Services are anticipated for one student. Second. Any questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Thank you. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. <coughs> Sorry. I'll have a brief recess. <coughs> Sympathy pangs for Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Agenda item I, please, Mrs. Gensel. Okay. 
I move that it be resolved that the board approves the high school winter guard to travel to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for the East Power Regional Tournament for March 15th through 17th, 2024. Second. Questions or comments? <laughs> Mrs. Gilman. I just wanted to acknowledge the varied input received from both students and parents regarding these trips. There were strong opinions both for and against, and I value these perspectives. It highlights the significant commitment and dedication our students invest in their extracurricular activities in addition to their academic responsibilities. I understand the importance of finding balance and trust that the approval process for these trips prior to the board approval thoroughly considers all discussed factors and aims to align with our educational goals and the best interests of our students. Setting clear expectations from the start is important. If approved, participation in any of these trips remain a choice and we place our trust in families to make decisions that best serve their students' interests. Thank you, Mrs. Kelman. Additional questions or comments? Mrs. Galvin took the words out of my mouth, but more eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for outlining the process last week, though, Dr. Davis. It was very helpful. And as we're voting on these, I trust that uh, the middle school and high school um, administration has cleared them, and so therefore it, it is um, up to us to go with the administration recommendation. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. All right, our agenda item J, please. Mrs. Burdick, where am I <laughs> in the circle? I, I lost think, my. I think Mrs. Goof. Mrs. Goof. Absolutely. Um, I move it to be resolved that the board approves the high school winter guard travel to Dayton, Ohio for the International World Championship Tournament from April 10th through 12th, 2024. <clears throat> Second. Questions or comments on agenda item J? All right, roll call please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Agenda item K, please, Mrs. Kreitel. I move that it be resolved that the board approves the high school winter guard to travel to Wildwood, New Jersey for the Indoor Association Atlantic Coast Championships Tournament from May 2nd through the 5th, 2024. Second. All right. Questions, comments? Roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. Okay, agenda item L please, Mr. Hoffman. I move that it be resolved that the board approves revisions to policy JICG, student smoking, use and or possession of tobacco offenses in the form presented. Second. Any questions or comments on the policy? All right, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. All right, agenda item, please. Uh, M, please, Mrs. Gelman. I move that it be resolved that the board approves revisions to policy ADC slash GBED, tobacco free school, tobacco free workplace, in the form presented. Second. 
questions or comments? All right, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. And finally, policy uh, agenda item N, please, Mrs. Burdick. I move that it be resolved that the board approves revisions to policy ECF, Energy Management Conservation, in the form presented. Questions or comments? No, oh, we need a second. Second. Thank you. Now questions or comments? All right, roll call, please. Voting is open. Ms. Johnson? Approved. Voting is closed and the motion passes unanimously. All right. Agenda item seven, uh, questions or comments from residents. Presentations or comments are to be limited to three minutes. Anyone who'd like to offer a comment, please approach the podium. Uh, Bruce Slater from 140 Skylark Circle. I really don't like the um, agenda the way it's being done now. Uh, voting where you don't, don't even hear a person's voice voting. Uh, it's very secretive. In the last four or five years, well, last four at least, been no uh, real open discussion or between the members or uh, the superintendents or anything else uh, discussing any of the agenda items. Um, it's very secretive, I think, now. Uh, and in fact, uh, there's no agenda uh, pa uh, papers on the uh, desk uh, today. And um, the last um, agenda, uh, I, I missed last week because I was working at a uh, basketball game here, but uh, uh, I, I don't like the way it's, uh, the formatting uh, was last month. Uh, it's very, very sketchy, twice as many pages or three times as many pages, uh, but you know, less information, less discussion. I, I, nobody gets a feel for in public what everybody's thinking or uh, may dig out some other details of the issues that people don't know, are not aware of uh, or or could be improved on from what was maybe uh, on the agenda in any way. Uh, I, I just don't like the way that, uh, the way it's going right now. Very sick, too secretive. Thank you for your comment, Mr. Slater. Um, I will ask that we have paper copies of the agenda. We, we did announce, um, we did move to an online platform called Board Docs. It actually provides more information than we've ever provided publicly, um, been able to provide publicly before. Uh, each agenda item that we're talking about, whether it's a policy or financial item, is linked with the original document that the board is considering. Um, on the website, but for those who prefer a paper and and the the formatting, which I agree is not as pretty, but it is directly um, exported from that new system, which allows us to ultimately provide additional transparency. Um, but we will work to make paper copies of the agenda available uh, in the meeting room as well for those who um, can or prefer not to follow along digitally. Um, and there is a QR code on the back table there as well for access to all the documents that are shared. And in terms of the voting, the voting does show up on the screen as the members are voting. So they may not be vocal, but they are um, recorded. And I know uh, last week we spent about two and a half hours discussing the matters in which we voted on this evening in pretty significant detail. And all of our meetings are recorded and are available for viewing. So if you miss a meeting because you're working, we encourage you to watch them online as well. 
other folks who would like to uh, offer comment? Anyone online, Mr. Stengel? Okay. Um, I'd like to announce that the board met in executive session this evening for personnel matters. Um, I am sorry that I'm having a cough drop on the microphone. Uh, upcoming public meetings on March 11th at 7.30 p.m. The board discussion meeting will be here in D205 of the high school, also available via Zoom. And on March 18th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m., the board regular meeting will be in D205 of the Mount Lebanon High School and also available via Zoom. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. One more second. <laughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.